everyone and welcome back to the channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at the Transformers Studio Series 87 Dark of the Moon Bumblebee. This figure took me a while to track down and I finally bought it at a good price on Amazon.com for 25 bucks. So, if you guys missed out on this figure, I know many of you have and many of you haven't, go check out Amazon as he is on his regular retail price for now. But overall, I'm really excited to open this figure and see what awaits us inside. So here we have the figure. The figure is still in the box, I just wanted to show you very briefly on how the box looks like. The box has a very, very lovely CG render of Bumblebee in his Dark of the Moon alt form. He is very jacked and very ripped, similar to Optimus Prime. He has the number 87, Bumblebee, I really do like this head. And right here we get some nice product shots of Bumblebee in his both robot form and chimera form, his iconic movie seasons, the Battle of Chicago, and his little bio says, a well-timed distraction allows Bumblebee to escape execution at the hands of Salome. So in the film, Brains and Wheelie, if I do remember correctly, saved Bumblebee from Soundwave and the uh, other Autobots as well, and they survived and then they beat up the Decepticons. And right here we get an extended shot of the same CGI right here. So yeah, I'm really happy that this Bumblebee has an open face and no uh, mask. So without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open and see what awaits us inside. So here we have the figure out of the packaging. And oh my god, this figure looks so nice. Now there are some little things that I don't like about the figure and some things I do like about the figure. First off, let's start with the things I like. So bringing in for a closer look at Bumblebee, I really do like this chest piece. It is very original and it is a reference to his, um, his studio, I'm sorry, his, um, Dark of the Moon look and he in Dark of the Moon if you didn't notice Bumblebee and Optimus Prime were really jacked in that film and they just had a lot of more details near the chest and abdomen region and I do like how they added that onto the figure moving alongside right here just moving on to the waist and the inner leg we can see we have this gunmetal gray and a lot of nice hydraulic details and we have this silver plate on on the crotch piece so it looks really really nice and he does have this painted in gunmetal and I really do like how the wheels Right here, they are painted in silver and sculpted in gunmetal gray as well. And I really do like how, how dark this figure is and how it feels. It just feels so right for a Bumblebee. Now the head sculpt, eh, it's alright. It's in the mid section. However, I would have preferred if he had more googly eyes similar to how he did in the film. And honestly, I feel like this is the Clunker B head but just slightly remolded. Not a huge fan of it, but overall looks good. I mean, they made this 79 head sculpt. I mean, they could do the same thing here, but Hasbro was just lazy on this one. And this figure is over two years old, so I don't really expect anything new. And then moving on to the backside, we have the kibble, of course. It's the same mold as the previous ones. And we have a little weapon storage for this as well. So overall, I feel like the figure has a lot of potential on it, but they could have done. And the potential that I was talking about is mostly the head sculpt. And right here, I don't like how this is all bland. They would have, they should have painted this region as in the Studio Series 49. This whole region was painted in silver. And uh, and on the feet they were had they had yellow highlights and stuff. So honestly, if I were if it was up to me, I would have honestly kind of filled in these gaps, painted that, painted that, and added probably the little ripped cage, like the closed cage um, look he had in the film. But overall, I think the figure is a really really well done figure, and I think Hasbro did a marvelous job on this one. As far as his articulation goes, he does have his head on a ball joint, so he can look up, down, barely to side to side, and do a full 360 if he wanted to. He does have a ball joint arm, so he has a lot of range of motion. However, this piece is um, is just restricting it. He has a ball joint right here, so he has a lot of range of motion. Unfortunately, no restraints as they are using the previous mold from the Series 49 and 74. So I don't really expect it that much. And then right here we have a race rotation. So that's pretty cool. As well as having a ball joint at the leg so he can move that all the way right around all freely he wants. He has a mushroom peg at the leg so he can move the thigh around. And he does have ankle ankle foot rotation I think. I don't know what it's called. But overall these Bayfors designs were so um, weird but so iconic. And I do love them. So speaking of Bayfors I want to show you how this guy looks like with other Bayfors characters. First let's start off with the figure that started it all. My Transformers series, series number 29 Sideswipe. This figure is what got me into collecting and this is the outcome of collecting. So basically I'm so happy just to have Dark of the Moon characters and Bavers characters in my collection. It's just so so nice to have this guy. And I think this, this scale is accurate to the film and it looks really really nice. Here we have the Studio Series Dino, a figure that a lot of you have forgotten about but it's such a great figure. And Dino compared to Bumblebee here 
this is actually the perfect size of these characters. So if you had Dino or if you have Bumblebee, you just honestly can't have one without the other. They look so good together. Now, here we have the Studio Series 49 Bumblebee, and the difference between the 49 Bumblebee and our Dark of the Moon Bumblebee is that besides the chest piece being entirely different, a new sculpt and paint, the, the also this region right here in the car mode is different, which we'll touch base on later. This figure has more paint than this one does, and it's it's honestly quite a shame that this one, like all the paint is on the body when they could have just used a great sculpt from this one and just added all that paint onto the pieces right here. So I don't get why Hasbro didn't do that, but Overall, they still look cool together. A similar thing can be said for the Studio Series 74 Bumblebee, as this figure was a little too bland and a little too orange, and I feel like Darker the Moon Bumblebee should look more of this color than this one does, honestly. And here we have a Bumblebee through the ages, starting from 2007, working his way to 2014. I don't have the last night version because honestly, I don't re I don't really have time to pick it up. I do have the Bumblebee um, World War Tank version, but that one just looks bad. So overall, we can see between these figures how Bumblebee looks. And honestly, the one that shines the most is this one and this one. And I prefer this one just because of the paint job on the chest, but obviously this one seems more superior. And I also don't like that um, the head sculpt does look kind of off looks like the clunker bee when well, they could have used one similar to this one for this one but i'm so glad we we didn't get the these head sculpts i mean i was getting tired of that anyways so overall the figure looks cool here we have bumblebee with soundwave and bumblebee soundwave looks really cool and i really can't wait to recreate that action scene where bumblebee kills soundwave and potentially the minions in his chest now moving along here we have one of our first records being roadbuster and roadbuster to bumblebee looks really really cool here we have Topspin and Leadfoot with Seal Jaw. Here we have the Bayverse Ratchet Mold. Unfortunately, I don't have the 07 version from 2007 or the, the Dark of the Moon version, but I do have this Nest version, which is pretty cool, and it does blend in. I just can't wait till I get my hands on a, on a Dark of the Moon or an Age of Extinction type of ratchet. And finally, the leader of the Autobots, Optimus Prime. Through some rapid fire comparisons, here I bring in Sentinel Prime, Moon Megatron, Dark of the Moon concept art, uh, Thundercracker. Here we have Crowbar slash Dreadbot slash Crankcase Mold. Here we have the Starscream Mold, mostly used for Ranger the Fallen and number one. And here, here we have the Fallen, one of the characters a lot of people do have. Here we have Megatron, a more recent leader class, soon to be replaced by my 86 Swoop and my 86 Springer on the way. Here we have one of the modern Voyagers being the leader class Shock, I'm sorry, Voyager class Shockwave from Bumblebee. And for general size comparison, here I brought in Optimus Prime from Transformers 1. And here we have all of the Autobots from Dark of the Moon, except for Q and Ironhide and Wheelie and Brains. Wheelie and Brains we're going to get next year with Shockwave with the repackage. For Q we're going to get next year, so I don't really have to worry about that. But for Ironhide, I could buy a KO as the original one costs up to hundreds of dollars, which is very ridiculous. So. I suggest buying a KO if you don't have a Dark of the Moon Ironhide. I'm going to do it pretty soon. So for Bumblebee's transformation, it is very similar to the Studio Series number 49 and 74 Bumblebee transformation. So without further ado, let's get started.
And there, there we have Bumblebee fully transformed into his awesome 2011 Camaro. And honestly, the 2011 Camaro from Dark of the Moon is my most favorite design from the whole Transformer saga. I really do like this. Aside from the last night Camaro, I really do like how this one looks like. Returning our attention toward the Camaro itself, the Camaro looks really, really nice. Just taking a look, we get a really nice Chevrolet logo on the, on the Camaro right there. And I really do like how we have these lights. It is the exact same mold from the Revenge of the Fallen, but updated with the 49 from the Transformers 2007 colors. I really do like how the rims on the wheels do look like. They look very shiny. And they and honestly, you could spot this guy a mile away and it looks really nice. Um, the only really added piece was the spoiler, which looks really, really nice. Overall, you're, it's the same figure from the Studio Series 49 and the 74. Um, just some pieces won't happen as this is my first time transforming it and Honestly to be honest. I really do like it. I just wish there would have been a slightly bit more paint. However It's fine how it is and I really do like how the how this um, Design differentiates from the other ones where it has this like little dance right here and has the two black lines right there Looks really nice. I always love this Camaro form and I just cannot wait to show you how he looks like with the others Here's how Bumblebee looks like with the Revenge of the Fallen and the Transformers 1 version. And from Transformers 1 to Transformers 3, I honestly really do like the third one the most. I do like the first one, that one is the classic original. I do like the color of this one and I do like the design of this one. So overall, they all have their flaws and they all have their weaknesses, but they still have their iconicness. The one thing I really would have liked is if we had the Dark of the Moon version, the one I'm reviewing, in this color, as this color matches more of how he looked like in the film, but I don't really mind all that much, and this figure honestly looks pretty, pretty cool. Overall, the figures, these two figures are a little bit older, and the, the paint, I'm sorry, the, the color starting to wear off, whereas this one is a more newer figure, and we can see how the color is still vibrant and brand new, and a per preference is up to you. I personally like this one. You guys tell me in the comment section down below. Now I did want to show you between all three of these wheel designs, the wheel designs do change over time. If we take a look at the movie one, the one at the bottom, it's like a silver kind of thick but thin over here, whereas the movie three is extremely thin and in gunmetal, and the movie two is extremely thick in silver. So overall the wheel designs as well have changed. I did want to show you the, on the Studio Series 49 and Studio Series 87 Bumblebee, we have this tiny little engraved Autobot symbol, whereas for the Studio Series 74, we just have this line. So it's quite peculiar why they decided to do that, but we can see right here for the Studio Series 49, we have a little Autobot symbol that's at the little corner right here. We have a bigger one right here, and we have just this little line for this one. So overall, it's quite confusing why there's a little difference, but I do like the little subtle differences and it just shows that Hasbro put so much effort into these figures. And now, here we have all, if not most, of the Dark of the Moon Autobots, those being Optimus Prime, Bumblebee, Mirage, uh, Sideswipe, Roadbuster, Topspin, Leadfoot, and Ratchet. Unfortunately, no Ironhide and Q at the moment, so we're just gonna have to wait till next year. But overall, this looks so sick. This is my childhood right here. It looks so nice. I'm so happy to get Dark of the Moon B and all of these guys together transformed up. Here we have Bumblebee solely um, focused with Optimus Prime. Optimus Prime to Bumblebee. Honestly, Optimus Prime towers over Bumblebee and dwarfs him and everything. So it looks really cool. Bumblebee with Dark of the Moon size type. They're around the same size. So if you have this figure, you won't be expecting that much change in size. Same could be said with the Studio Series Dino slash Mirage. The same thing right here. They're all around the same size. So overall, these figures look really, really cool with one another. I can't wait to see what Hasbro pulls out next. So, some final thoughts on the Transformers Studio Series 87 Deluxe Class Dark of the Moon Bumblebee. A perfect example of a retail and remold over and over again, but it's still such a cool figure. The figure what lacks is probably paint and probably accuracy. The, in the accuracy department, they nailed it except for the face. I don't really like the face all that much. It just looks too slim. And the, the feet, I really wish they would have painted that little part yellow similar to the 49 Bumblebee, but I don't really mind that much and I wish they paid a paint to the shoulders. I'm pretty sure some extra paint on the body could have worked as that, but overall, I think they were trying to save money on this or something. But I really do like this figure. Um, how this figure scales is 
really really nice he scales perfectly with the dark of the moon cast and Bayvert's characters overall i really do like it he looks lovely with optimus prime and the other autobots so i cannot wait to display this guy on the shelf so tell me what you thought of this figure did you pick him up are you going to pick him up and i do recommend if you haven't picked him up i suggest you do as this is a great bumblebee starter you can buy him on amazon for around 25 to 26 dollars right now i suggest getting it right now because pretty soon he's going to get sold out, similar to many other figures, as this figure was kind of rare at the time it was released. Honestly, I did not find a single Bumblebee in my Targets or Walmarts, and I found one at Macy's, but I skipped out on it, and I had to wait two years to get this one on Amazon. So it's quite unfortunate I had to wait this long for this figure. Same thing with Perceptor, our next review, but overall, I really do like it. So, that about concludes my video. Thank you for watching. Please subscribe, leave a comment, until my next review, I'll see you then. And in the words of Optimus Prime, transform and roll out.